Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alex. This is John. We're from uh, VMware Source uh, Program Office. And uh, we'd like to talk about some of the uh, difficulties we've had with finding data and, uh, to, to measure the health of the open source project that we're uh, we using. So we, um, uh, there's some pretty useful tools out there, some uh, free personal tools and some more uh, open source tools. For example, uh, we put uh, that uh, stack of data, uh, open, open, uh, open stack of um, Very, very well done, very personal tools. Also, the dev stats, I know you guys were talking about it earlier today, uh, really useful for the CNCF projects. Uh, kind of hard to use for your own, uh, for your own uh, purpose. And of course, we, uh, we looked at Remore Lab, which has a lot of uh, uh, data sources. Unfortunately, we want to track a lot of projects because we use a lot of open source projects. And that, those tools don't really scale to the, to the scale. Yeah, so to, to, to kind of put the scale in perspective, um, we're not, we want to not only track projects that are uh, specific projects that are important to us, we want to track everything that a VMware employee would do um, from an open source perspective. It's going to be fundamentally curious and interesting. Um, and, and, the, uh, and depending on how your, your development model works, and there are some questions I think from the podcast on, you know, well, what is everybody else doing? Well, the answer to that question is everything. Um, so it's all broken, and I, could, I, I wish you good luck on figuring out your policies. Um, because we have developers who pull stuff into their own repositories, we have developers who work in the Linux kernel who are going to use our email addresses for, for, for a variety of reasons, and there's all kinds of everything. So we have 12,000 different repositories that we are currently tracking that are VMware specific. We are then also tracking repositories from everyone else that we can do comparative analytics. So to put this into perspective, we have two terabytes of raw Git data. How many of your tools that are currently out there will process this in a timely manner? <laughs> Less depth stats will stop. That was an emphatic shaking of the head. No. Um, so, and we're, we're all trying to answer the same fundamental question. We're all coming at the, 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 the elephant from slightly different perspectives on how are our communities doing, how are our contributions being taken, are people coming in and contributing to us, are we just contributing upstream, are our patches even making it upstream, uh, um, how are, why are they making it upstream, why are they not making it upstream? So the, 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 the age old question here is, you know, you like red chili or green chili, if you're from New Mexico, the correct answer is Christmas. <laughs> so if you're ever there, ask for Christmas, uh, you'll get treated like a native. But um, so yeah, so so we we fundamentally started, you know, we looked at a bunch of different projects that are, are that are already pulling data and trying to process this data. But they all come back to fundamentally GitHub's API. Which how many people in this room have actually queried GitHub's API directly? Okay, about half this one. How many of you have figured out that it's really, really slow? <laughs> <laughs> about half the people. Um, so I actually had to build in some statistical analysis into our GitHub API querying tool to figure out exactly how slow it is. Because you, you fundamentally can only ask, ask a question of the GitHub API once a second. Which means that you can only uh, ask 3,600 questions hour. Well, the problem then is, is okay, you know, that, that, that's a fair number of questions I can ask. Except that the, the, the data, uh, the, you can only get slopes of data back every time you ask. So the Linux kernel has 680,000 commits in it. Would you like to know how long it takes to ask GitHub for every commit in the Linux kernel? Why would you go to GitHub and not go to GitHub? Why would we go to, to GitHub and not to get, to get the same data? Um, simple, simplification of the API, but you're, you, you're absolutely correct, is that asking the API that this is pointlessly stupid and um, if for no other reason than it takes 16 hours to, to, to fetch a single Linux kernel tree, even though hypothetically it should only take eight, but the API slows down as you get further into the, the tree because um, as we suspect, GitHub uh, pulls the entire uh, Git repository into memory, 
sorts through, finds the commits you want, and then tears the whole thing down. So that when you ask for the next hundred queries, it reverses the entire process back and forth constantly, which means that you have a giant memory pressure issue that can spend a problem. That, uh, that GitHub fundamentally is enforcing on themselves, despite the fact that they're trying to break the limit. So they're actually making their lives worse. Okay. Um, there's also a couple of other uh, uh, fascinating problems that we've discovered with GitHub's API when, you, um, when us and several other entities that I've talked to, uh, specifically the Kubernetes folks who are using DevStats. Um, they've sent, they, we found that the, their, their APIs miss things. Is that once in a while, they'll just not tell you something if you're, if you're asking for stuff out of like the, the, um, the streaming API. They just magically, it never hits. So we're, we're also assuming that there's some sort of eventually consistent database in the back end that then just never tells you once something's synced. But we have noticed data that has literally never made it through that you then have to go back and query to acquire. And even GitHub API, which is supposed to achieve all the GitHub events, sometimes missing events. Correct. That is exactly what I'm saying. So, uh, uh, so yeah. And it's just obviously painfully slow. Queries sometimes can take upwards of 30 to 45 seconds to get anything useful back. So GitHub is a pain in the butt. Let's see what else is out there. There are things like GH Archive. This is beautiful and wonderful. It has all of this data hypothetically already pulled for you, except that it doesn't. It's based on the activity stream, which we, which we already know it, um, sometimes is missing event data out of the activity stream. Um, they're also really specific about that they want to um, only track open source software, except that they don't really ever define what they think is open source software. So if you go and you look at uh, GH Archive um, after you rebuilt the entire stream, which can be relatively large uh, if you care about it, um, you'll find that you know Twitter has you know some something like a thousand, or Microsoft has a thousand. Uh, uh, different uh, open source projects that are reasonably well marked from a, a metadata perspective, and there's three that are actually in the GH archive stream. So if you, if your project that you care about is not actually in the, in the GH archive stream, it's kind of broken. And you also end up with this lovely problem of wherever GH archive is and whatever their their policies are, they actively obfuscate the email address and the GitHub user ID for every user. So if you wanted to drill something all the way back to a specific user to track, say, where, how many commits Stephen Rostack has done to the Linux kernel this week, because that is, a, uh, that is something that we may or may not care about as Stephen Rostack was going to be a kernel. Um, you, you used to get the, uh, an email address of dot, dot, dot at gmail.com, dot, dot, dot at comcast.com, or dot, dot, dot at vmware.com. Well, this works really, really well if you force all of your users to use your company, your corporate email address for, for the commits. Well, that doesn't work when you're doing something like the Linux kernel and people are used to seeing Stephen Ross at Linux.org or, or Hot9 at But I'm not going to go around to all of my uh, the, the, the VMware employees and ask, you know, what is, what is the email address you're using? Oh, at gmail.com. Well, that's going to be impossible to, to track. Well, it gets more interesting as GH Archive recently has changed the entire data set that they have. So where they used to give you dot 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 at gmail.com, they are now giving you these delightful hashes, which we assume currently are unique. We have not been able to prove this. But they also, in some cases, will hash the, um, um, uniquely hash the domain name. And we can't figure out why, what the why and reason is for hashing the domain name. Which then gets interesting if you're trying to do an entire query for, uh, you know, at Comcast.com or you know at VMware.com or any of these kinds of things, you can't actually correlate useful that. So GH Archive is kind of useless and, 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 and broken. There is a solution for this. You can use a GitHub API directly, and you will have email address and GitHub login. Yes. For the GitHub login, and you can correlate the GitHub logins so you get emails. And then I, yes, I can reverse their hash because I have all of the data fundamentally. But it, it's kind of obnoxious that you have to go through pulling the entire GitHub 
um, user database first. So you have all the, the logins and all the, the email addresses that are associated. Yeah. You then have to find a hash that you can correlate between the two. Because you can't do it based on... Yes, you can only get a current email address, which is from GitHub, to right. EI. You cannot do it if somebody uses the use a different email address from the past. You will have the past straight from the archives and you won't correct them. Correct. Yeah. So, so, so there are, yes, there are ways around this. They're not great. But I would much rather see JH Archive just give up on obfuscating the email addresses because fundamentally your email address is already owned by all of the spammers. So giving them one additional data point for trying to find a valid email address is kind of pointless. Or, or trying to hide it. So Google Big Query, to, to the rescue, right? No, wait, they just pull everything from the HR archive into Google BigQuery, which means you have all of the same fundamental problems. You can just query it faster and do what you want it to do. Which is really awesome if your data set is appropriately tagged by the JH archive as being open source. Um, you don't care about any commits to people, and you don't care about a bunch of other things. So there's so many starting places where this could be really, really good. But they all kind of are terrible. And for, for my portion of this, I don't have any good answers. Everything sucks. Everything is broken. And we're all fighting the same exact bloody problem. And I don't uh, 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 and I would love to start a conversation at, here about how we can fix how we get at the data, whether that's GitHub or GitLab or whatnot. And I know there's people raising their hands, but uh, 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 um, I'll quickly finish this slide and I'll help. I'll try and answer the questions. But I would love to see somebody, you know, like GitHub Archive, throw up all of their data and make it available for everybody without trying to obfuscate anything. And yes, this may be a problem with GDPR or whatever the public privacy laws we may or may not have. But we've got to, fundamentally, we're all fighting this problem whether we realize it yet or not. And so, yes. Okay. So, uh, what about GH Torrent? DH Torrent? DH Torrent. I have not actually heard of that one. Is it, the, is it just the, the GH Archive stuff in a Torrent? No, no, it's a basic one. If you build a different GH build, and you can get it from the Torrent. It is not one that I have ever found, so. The uh, obfuscation has been a problem because of the European yes. laws, that's an issue. <laughs> But no, I, I haven't heard of it, so I mean, if nothing at all, so that's been useful. Yeah, they're, uh, they're obfuscated for privacy reasons. People didn't opt in for email. I worked at GitHub. Yeah, okay. So they are unique, but they're not reversible. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not directly reversible unless you go through the pain of correlating the data so that you can create a little bit. They are very pliable. Yes. So. Anyway. So something else that we're trying to work on is um, trying to see the impact that our team has. We have about 20 um, engineers that contribute upstream to uh, outside projects, Kubernetes, Linux, uh, OpenFast, a bunch of Python security products. And we want to know, we want to quantify what their impact on the health of those communities is. And we have run into some issues there too. So, there's two types of projects that we that we contribute to. Uh, GitHub hosted projects, pretty easy to get a data through the API at a, at a low scale, especially when you have the username of all the people you're interacting. So I have a list of everyone's username and I track their um, pull requests, the reviews, the issues, the comments, and we get a pretty good idea of how we are doing in terms of contributions. But then we have all the other projects that are not hosted, you know, Linux and QT. So we contribute to those, and the only way to track those issues, uh, those contributions, is to actually go through their GitHub, right? Um, and because we don't really know the, um, the number of projects we're contributing to is not defined, we kind of have to ask the people that they're contributing to what they are um, contributing. So on that side, super easy, GitHub API with their username. And on the other side, um, we have to build some custom tooling with on that, you know, to get uh, and it gets a little more uh, things. And um, that was it. And we uh, hopefully can uh, start some discussions, get some comments. 
You got five minutes. We got five minutes. Come on, ask questions. Yes. Just one other thing to note yeah. the email thing. Uh, if you are using uh, Big Query, yeah. those emails are double hashed. So the, the data in the GHR track, we hashed it to uh, <coughs> people that didn't opt in. The big emails that you use are published. So, for me, for, for, so are, are you with GitHub or are you with GHR? No, I'm with GitHub. Okay. Um, is there is there anything is there any reason that you can think of from the GitHub perspective why they wouldn't include the the, the GitHub ID, the GitHub unique ID? Because at least at that point you could translate that back by asking the GitHub API questions. Uh, can you look at that? Okay. Uh, no, I, 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 I have the answer. I have the answer. Yeah. So I've managed group of public data set program. Yep. Um, and I can tell you that we can certainly look into that. I, I don't think we've really had that discussion yet. Okay. Um, but I think it's more important. I, I mean, from what you're here, it's more important you guys are able to uniquely identify users and, and whatever that that ends up being. Yeah, I, I don't care what path I, I get to. I need to be able to translate, you know, me, spe you know, in, 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 in a specific case, me specifically, you know, let's say I have an at gmail.com address that I'm, I'm, I'm committing as. I don't. But, you know, how, you know I, I have this giant data set. How am I supposed to track down without doing a lot of really oddball queries? Because if I could take a data set and I don't have to download two terabytes of GitHub data to, to track things down, if I could actually use GitHub or Google BigQuery data set to say, give me all of the, you know, I, I have figured out all of my unique IDs. Yeah. Give me all of the commits for these unique IDs, you know, in a big giant dump. That would be way more useful than having to to, to rebuild the, uh, the the interim data set. Okay, he had his kind of first. Well, you know, I can tell you for sure that the GitHub user ID, mm -hmm. the unique ID, not the other, yeah. is there on GitHub Archive. Is it? For sure, yes. Because the last time we went looking for it, it was not. Uh, we can look at it. Five minutes from now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't want to sound good. The same thing. No. I think you need to understand the difference of the model of Git and GitHub. Yes. Because I'm well aware. I'm a Git developer. Because Git does not have user IDs on right. GitHub, and a lot of repositories are pushed into there without that yes. relationship between them. So you will never be able to do a mapping of everything. Oh no. I, 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 I'm, I'm fully aware of that particular problem. So from the point of view of the code repository. Very difficult to get what you want. The one that you want oh. from PR requests and all of that, yes. Yes, but right, now, but right now, from a, a, a perspective, 80 uh, uh, I believe 80 to 90 percent of the, the, the Git trees that we have pulled in have a mappable um, Git uh, GitHub ID. That's right. So you have to do that mapping. Yeah. They have to yeah. yeah. I, I have to do that mapping myself right now, which is fine. But it's when I want to go into somebody else's data set where I'm not having to directly pound on GitHub um, for 10 days to pull in the data set that I care about, the, the current data set that I care about. Um, I would like to, to do something, you know, if I can use Google's BigQuery to do this and, and offload that off of the, the painful uh, uh, infrastructure of GitHub, that would make, I think, everybody happy. That's kind of where I'm getting at. But if uh, we can fix this in the next five minutes. Yes. The, the issue seems to be that there are three different data sets in the query. There is one that is GitHub Archive that has everything, not only open source. And it has a GitHub ID. There's another one that has a copy of the source code. And that one doesn't have the GitHub ID, and that one is only open source. Okay. And there's also GH Torrent, uh, which yeah. are our friend put that here, and you can use these three different ways. But if you go to the GH archive one, you will find the ID, and you will find the everything there. Okay. Not only the text. So I think we're probably gonna have a lot of time. So let's say that in the same direction, if you go to the authority, many of the products that you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe they are solved. Maybe they are in the way of solving because they have yeah. this idea of getting contributions from people to do things like that, mapping from addresses yeah. to um, yes. Yeah. So if you want to talk to them and, and yeah, no, I, I, back I, to them. Yeah. Thank you. So, do you have anything else? Awesome.